Welcome in, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And welcome to anybody that's joining us for the first time and to any return listeners. We really appreciate it. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Yes. Um, we are here doing uh, episode 12, right, babe? Yes. And this is, what's the topic? This topic is suicide. So this is a heavy one. This is a heavy one, but I... I really didn't think ahead of time about this topic, about what I was going to get into and the research I was going to do. And let me tell you, this episode has opened up lines of communication for me with people that I haven't talked to in years because so many people have dealt with this or are currently in some way dealing with it that it's just made people need to reach out and talk. And that's been great. Well, I'm glad that we're going to talk about it. It's kind of like the elephant in the room. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's something that is uncomfortable, scary, whatever. Um, But maybe we can bring in some peace to some people and ease a little people in this. Yes. You know, for a little bit with this. So For sure. But we also have our very (laughs) first guest. Yes, we do. We would like to welcome Marina Jones. Hi. Welcome. This is our lovely, beautiful daughter. Um, she has unfortunately had some experience this with this in her life. Yeah. And she felt like maybe she could help by coming on and talking, um, maybe help some of her peers, parents. Yeah. Give a fresh perspective yeah. too, because us adults, we just look at it from our perspective. Right. We don't always look at it from the way it's affecting our kids. So. True. Yeah. All right. Well, before we hop into uh, this episode, do you want to talk about last week anything? I do. So last week we did animal communication, and that was the episode that I was like the most excited about. Yep. And we had such a great response to that. When I listened back to it, because uh, we always listen back to our shows just to make sure everything is good with them, and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't talk about this. I didn't talk about this, and I thought, we need to do another one. And the response that we got from people is, we need to do another one. Yeah, it was resounding. Yeah. So I'll read a couple of these real quick. This is from Shannon. She said, love this episode and would love for you to do more just like it. You have a very special gift and your love for animals is incredibly heartwarming. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shannon. Yes, thank you. And then from Sherry, I was looking forward to this episode and I was not disappointed. I enjoyed it so much. Samantha, I could tell by your voice how passionate you are about your work. The hour just flew by. I would love to hear another episode with more client stories. That's cool. And we Thanks, will give Sherry. you those. Yes, thank you, Sherry. It's funny because after we record one of these, I get nervous. Like, how are people going to respond to it? Are they going to like it? Right. And so to hear these kind of responses, it, it definitely makes it worth it, and it makes me relax a little yeah. bit. Cool. Yeah. Well, that was a good one in there. Yeah. I mean, we get a lot of responses Great. period yeah, but we you do. can see ones that people really really like and that's cool yeah so all right anything else that's all i got for you oh wow. yeah okay well i guess it's time to hop right into episode 12 then yes I uh, think suicide is that. the topic yes um so first i i definitely want to say that this episode could be a trigger warning so if this is a topic that you're sensitive to maybe this isn't the episode to be listening to right Um, If you are having these kinds of thoughts of taking your own life, there are a couple of places that you can call. We're not experts. We just talk about what what we know, and we're we're definitely not here to counsel. So you can reach the National Suicide Prevention Line at 800-273-TALK. That's 800-273-8255, and that's 24-7, and it's confidential. And then there's also... Another line for the LGBTQ community, and that number is 866-488-7386. Again, it's 866-488-7386. 
cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I thought it was important. It is, you know, and anybody yeah. listening, if you're struggling and have something you need to talk, there's no shame in talking. No. It's 100% confidential. Go talk. It could Five minutes could distract your mind from something like that. It just take ease you, you know? Absolutely, and you never know what kind of realizations you might come to in that time. Absolutely. Um, another reason why I was I was interested in doing this episode is because I think that as a medium, I can give people a different perspective on things because I can I can tell you a little bit about what happens after someone commits suicide. Where do they go? What right. what do they feel? What what happens? You know, and I can definitely tell you that from my time as a medium, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that they go to the same place as everybody else. And they have the same amount of respect as everybody else. So I hope that people find comfort in that. Yeah. You know, it did for me. It lost, you know, I've never considered myself uh, the type that could ever uh, do it. I I think a lot of people have considered it because it's like stealing fruit from the tree of knowledge. It's like we know that's a possibility within our existence, but. I'm not the type of person to really want to do that, but how it's affected me in my own life by losing people, knowing that what you just said, right? Uh, made it so much, so much easier. It's not like it's condoning it or right. making it okay because I still think it's not the right choice. No, it, it's but, it's definitely not. But we right. can't judge people's choices. That's not what right. we're here for. So. No, I mean that's just my own personal. Right, me too. <laughs> I I think that. For me, it's the same having this kind of knowledge and seeing the things now that I've seen and realizing that spirits that didn't didn't lose their lives that way are sometimes not even as strong as the ones that did. Yeah. Like, for example, your friend Rob, he is a such a strong spirit and he hasn't been gone like what, 10 years, maybe yeah, something about close to that. And he's <clears throat> he's not as strong as my mom, but he's close for so. me, at least. I can feel him that strongly. And so that says a lot to me about, you know, what exactly is going on here. Oh, I can definitely feel it. now. Yeah. So like I always do, I did poll questions. And one of the questions that I asked was um, how many of our listeners have in some way been affected by suicide? And 84% of people said that they had. 84%. That is a high number. It's high. It's very high because when when you get into just the statistics about how many people are actually doing it, right, successful, that that's more reflective on who's being affected by, right. And if that was if that was a global statistic, could you imagine how many people have actually been affected by suicide? I can't, but I can give you the statistic for the number of people that do commit suicide annually. Worldwide is approximately 800,000 people oh. that that do it, that commit suicide. So imagine all of the people that that affects just the chain reaction. Yeah. And we don't always think about like the people, the farly removed people. Like, for example, I, I have a client for my pet sitting business that works for Amtrak. OK, he's worked for them for I think he said 11 years. And in his 11 years with them, he has been involved in approximately 14 of the of instances where somebody has either taken their life that way or has been hit by a train. It, it's both, you know, he doesn't know the numbers on those. Right. So we'll just say, I, I think from what I've seen in our town, that more often than not, it is suicide. And that has to be hard because even though he knows he didn't do anything wrong, right? he's still got to go home feeling some sort of you know what i mean like yeah guilt just because i was driving that machine that right this person... See, that's really sad they have to like live with that and yeah probably, i mean how do you separate yeah for themselves even if they didn't obviously they didn't do it on purpose no. or anything yeah he was driving a train exactly that I mean, was one question that i asked him because i i was really curious about that and in a way he he does have to separate himself because he said, if I go to work every day, like worrying that this is going to happen again, or, you know, feeling guilty that there was nothing that he could do. You know, those trains are going so fast. You can't stop them. You can pull your horn as much as you want and there's nothing you can do. So 
um, he was like the guilt. You kind of have to let it go. You can't, yeah, or you can't do that job. It's just like being a doctor and yeah, losing people. I, I suppose, people, yeah. I suppose. But I can't even imagine. And and that's the type of thing that that we don't think about. Also, the people on that train. He's like, there's potentially 300 people and and other staff on that train right. that could be injured from the train having to stop like that or or whatever it is. Right. So it really spreads wide. So if you take that 800,000 and you multiply it by, I don't even know how to figure it out. Yeah, because each one of those, like, 800,000 people, that's one person. And a lot of people just, like, use the statistics and, like, don't realize that each one of those numbers is a person. And then that's more people adding on to it that are affected by it. Yeah. Not just that one person. Absolutely. And that, I mean, that seems like it would extend, like, let's take, for example, maybe say, a couple and has children and one of the spouses does it and now it affects not only the spouse it affects the child then it affects that child's child oh yeah because they're grandparentless yep you know what i'm saying well and also and it just keeps going i did read one of the statistics is is that if you there's a much higher chance that if you have um a suicide like if somebody did, took their life when you were a child, a parent, or whatever, right. there's a higher risk that you'll do the same thing. Yeah. So it definitely does. It it affects so many people, so many. So. Well, um, that's part of the reason that we asked Marina to come on, because I thought maybe this might be a good time for her, because she has been affected. She has, yes. Um, and maybe this would be a good spot to kind of share a little, your story and maybe how that affected you then and how that affects you now. Okay. Yeah. So when I was in elementary school, I was probably like eight or nine and I had a best friend and we were together almost every single day and we were really close and our families were very close too. And, um, around that age, her dad was diagnosed with cancer And so she was only, like, eight or nine, which made it way harder for her, too, because obviously, like, she understands it, but that still is not easy to accept because your dad is, like, terminally ill. But over a few months and a few years, he started to get worse. And so I think at one point it ended up getting to stage four. And so he got all the treatments that he could get, and he even got a stem cell transplant, which, like, it helped, but it obviously didn't help like, the pain and everything that he was going through with himself. So after a few months, I think it was after his stem cell transplant, he decided that it was time to take his own life, which definitely affected the family. And he did write a lot of letters and set, like, the family up for after he passed. Financially. Yeah, and stuff like that, which was helpful, but that doesn't soften the blow at all. No. Um. But it definitely affected the family and his wife, for sure. And my best friend was with us even more than Charity was, and she basically lived with us. And it was just really, really sad to see how it affected everybody. Yeah. And even, like, secondhand, it affected me, too, because, like, I was really close to the family. And it was just so sad to see how fast something like that can happen without anybody even seeing it coming. Oh, yeah, for sure. Do you think that you, there's things that you carry from that experience? I mean, yeah. There was, during school, like a few months ago, um, I was in homeroom, and my teacher played one of the songs that was at his funeral, that was played at his funeral, and I just started sobbing in homeroom, like, for no reason. I just started sobbing, because I feel like, it's just like the memories yeah. and stuff like that, it's so, like, heavy yeah. to think about. And it's like, it wasn't even one of my family members, but it felt like it yeah. because I was so close to them. So it just, that shows how much it can affect not only your family, yeah. just, but just people around you and people that are close to you. Yeah. And sure. you're, you're such a super compassionate person. You're very much an empath. Oh yeah. So you feel the slightest, Yeah. you know, yeah, energy change. Uh, like it changes you. your emotion. So I can see that um, yeah. for sure in you. And that's a good quality. Don't don't ever be ashamed of that. No, you know, thank it's, you. It's, quite honestly, um, for those moments, uh, 
when I get overwhelmed like that, like something triggers a memory. Um, I feel there, I used to think of it as I'm just, I'm just thinking of a memory that makes me sad, but there's so much more to that that comes rushing oh, in yeah. that I feel their presence. Yeah. And I think that's what they do. We take the tears and think of, oh my God, this is too much. It's overwhelming. I think it's them saying, I'm okay. There were, rem- they were, took a chance because it got your attention because you were thinking about them. The moment that song came on. Yeah. Or whatever it was, they, you were thinking about it. They had your attention and it's like they, whoo, wham, yeah. They yeah. swoop and in like, and they make you just feel like, whoa. It's intense, yeah. yeah. And I hadn't like thought about it in like super in depth for probably a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, as soon as like the song came on, it just like oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, triggers it just, that. Yeah, it was really sad. Yeah, that's a tough one, kiddo. That's um, you know, and for him, as a as a person, and being terminally ill, and we'll get into one that one of your polls yeah. discusses this, but I respect him as a man that he he set up his family in advance to try to make it easier because I know he knew. I'd met him. I didn't know him really well, but I know that he knew that was important to try to ease as much of the strain as possible because this was going to be hard for everybody to accept. I think he didn't want to see his children look at him as he deteriorated like that and yeah. not understand. You know what I mean? Because you guys were still really young. Yeah. Yeah. Young, not to quite understand what was going on. So. He was facing a lot of obstacles, and I'm going to say, you know what? For the position he was in, I, I think it was okay. I don't blame him. And yeah. and that was that was one of the questions that I asked. I, um, I asked if it – I don't want to use the term, does it make it okay, because it's right. it's not okay. But does it make it a little bit easier to handle if it is um, like a terminal illness or something like that. And 78% said yes. And one of the comments that I thought was very interesting actually was from your stepmother. Um, She is a nurse and she had brought up the fact that physician assisted suicide is now legal in a lot more States than it was before, including California, um, Vermont, Washington, district of Columbia, I, there are a few more, but that is, that's amazing. And it makes me really sad that for, for your friend's dad, that he didn't have that yeah. accessible to him. I think it's, I think it's important. It's really sad to think about that it has to come to that. Yeah. But I think it's important because if somebody does think that that's the only right choice, right. at least there's a way to do it when you are terminally ill like that. Yep. And it makes, I think it makes it. A lot of people said that it made it more acceptable. Right. So. I wish, you know, it's. I am happy to see that more states are kind of getting involved in, in making that possible because for the same reason you wouldn't want to see one of our doggies right. have to suffer with something and they can't even tell us. You know, a human could say, I have stage four cancer. Right. I'm dying and I don't feel real good and I would rather just go. Right. You know? They can actually say that. Right. Our animals can't. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to see them suffer. Like exactly. That. It makes so no sense. why don't we have that choice? I think, you know, one question is, would people consider, you know, mental illness, not necessarily as a terminal illness, but a reason enough to do it, you know? Like, I'm never going to get better. I'm not getting better. I'm... I think I'm gonna that's like die a touchy with this, subject. Yeah, you know? I think because so too. if you're already like mentally ill, then right. you're not in the right mindset, right? For the most part, I would think to make that decision for yourself, right? Yeah, we'll come back to that. I right. wanted to, um, on that same topic of of the terminally ill, one of the statistics that I found really interesting was that this the age group that's the second most likely to commit suicide is 85 and over. Why does that have to happen? We have this now, this physician assisted suicide, right. and I know that there's rules to it and everything, but yeah. people that, Isn't that you know, men too, most of that, it, 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 well, the statistic for men, men commit are uh, 69% of all suicides. 
but in that men bracket, oh, I don't know. I don't think I it... thought it was 80 and up, most of them. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it was. I, I didn't write I'm that one down, but I'm pretty sure. In that percentage, too, which you might even have. Is, and then how many of those are veterans? Oh, yes. I do have the veterans. So, okay. So let's back up and tell you what the actual statistics are. It is in the United States, 14 people per every 100,000 commit suicide annually. Oh. That's 129 suicides per day in the U.S. alone. Oh, now, 20 of those are veterans, okay? But let me give you a more shocking statistic than that. Let's see. I know I wrote it down. Okay, here it is. Veterans in the United States make up 7% of the population. 20% of that 7% will commit suicide. Wow. Yeah. That's one fifth. That's high. Yes. Smart girl. <laughs> Did you just come up with that? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 20% is one fifth. Straight A student. We uh, should expect that. Uh, we're I both just, sitting here like, I just got purr. schooled. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, she's right. Yeah. She's Hell right. yeah. I don't so know if she's one right. fifth it is. We have no idea if she's right. So we're just. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, that's a that's an alarming statistic. It really is. And and what are what's the reason for that? I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I one of the things I did read was that it very much depends on the war that they were in. Um I I believe Afghanistan had much lower rates than Iraq. Wow. Yeah, it so it really just depends on like what they saw and that kind of thing and it just it shows that we need better mental health in this country. I mean, worldwide. Actually, the I didn't write these statistics down, but I did find that the country with the highest suicide rate by, I can't even tell you how much, it was ridiculous, is Russia. Men in Russia is the highest suicide rate of the entire wow. world. It, it's really high. So, yeah. It would be interesting to know why. I don't know if you would ever really know exactly why, but right. they also are a really huge country, though, too. So that yeah. probably adds more to population. It. Yeah, That's I true. think there's yeah, they probably got a lot of issues over there too. <laughs> so I don't know, but yeah, it was that was well, it was shocking what? to now, me. Now that I look at the state of our country, do they have any more issues than we true. have, or yeah. are they just different issues? Probably you know, true. different. Yeah, I, sometimes I wonder that, but yes. uh, I think it starts a with communication but above all else. Right. Is communication. Are you willing to talk? Yeah. Right. I, I remember my dad telling me that he, when he got, um, after his tour in Vietnam, he had to go, they, they all had to go see a psychiatrist. Yeah. At the end. Well, you're fresh. You're getting out. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're like so happy. You're like, I am done. Yeah. Most, most of the guys I would think. Some people yeah. got it, especially back in those days. Go back the in, draft, but, yeah. But yeah, in those days with the draft, and my dad was drafted. Yeah. So I do remember him telling me that he had to. They all have to see one as they're exiting. Well, that's not a real good time to really no. get into somebody's mind. All they're thinking about is, man, I am high on right. cloud nine because I'm out of here. I'm true. back to civilian life. I'm free. I get to see my you family. You need to call them in six months or a year and have them talk to you. Yeah. And see where they're at. Right. That's the time to be communicating. You're I mean, exactly not saying right. you shouldn't have an exit interview at the beginning or at the end when you're leaving, but right. you should have a follow up. Oh, absolutely. And, and before we start administering opiates and drugs and things <sighs> like that, let's talk, people. And this could go PTSD does not mean it's only, you know, if you've been in the military, right. oh, no, definitely not. people have PTSD from a lot of different traumatic they do. events in their life. Yes. I think starting with talking about those things, showing people that, A, it's okay to talk about it. Right. Don't be scared because you actually do yourself a lot better by doing this than you are going to go to Dr. Feelgood and get your script filled every 30 days and just kind of numb what's going on. I can tell you from a medium standpoint, because I have I have communicated with a few um, veterans that have taken their own life and even the ones that have it. Some of the things that I have seen and I have been told is that especially certain branches of the military pump them up 
to be that type of fighting machine. Yeah. And it kind of like trying to suck the empathy out of them and We've make programmed. it so that exactly. So then you come back here and it's like, you know, okay, program. Right. How do you, yeah. How That's do you do that? That's a very weird thing. And I'm not saying medication isn't necessary for a lot of people, but I think if we started with, that. Yes. Well, like, medication can only do so much if you're not willing to talk about it and like see the actual. This right. is true, and yeah. that's the thing. You know, I know for Rob, he did take depression medication, and before, shortly before he, he took his life, he stopped. And the withdrawal side effects it alone. It makes me wonder. Yeah. You know, if he kept taking them, would he have not done that? You know, I, I've i been told many times by my mom to share my own stories. Right. So sometimes I do. And so I'll be honest, and I've taken depression medication on and off most of my life. And when this whole thing started and we started going through the spiritual awakening, one of the things that I did was I got off of most of my medications, pretty much everything I don't need. Okay. <clears throat> and then I went to the depression medication and I started tapering myself off. And that was some of the lowest time that I have had in years since before I was even on the medication. You have to get off of that slowly. I didn't have a doctor watching me go through this. I was right. doing it myself. Just, okay, I'll, for a couple of days, I'll just take, right. you know, one every other day. You can't do that. Does it almost make you feel more depressed when you cold turkey it? Like you that, know what? Stop them? That will really mess you up. Because right. I did that years ago. I took um, Paxil. And not only did it make me feel, I do remember that one, making me feel suicidal. It also made me feel like somebody was turning the light switch off and on. Like I was having these jolts through my body, all oh. kinds of weird things happening. You can't just stop taking this medication. Your body needs it. I mean, maybe it doesn't need it forever, but right now your body's addicted to that and you have to slowly get off of it very slowly with, with doctors watching you because that is an, another high suicide rate is people that are withdrawing from medication. Yeah. 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 So one of the, the other questions that I asked was what drives a person to take their own life? And I think we're kind of on that subject right now, but the, the one that most people said was hopelessness. Yeah. And I, I think most of us have been at that point, not maybe to that degree necessarily, but where you do, you feel that like, how am I going to get myself out of this? How is this going to change? And you know what? As you get older, at least for me, I see that this is just a natural cycle of life. You have the ups, you have the downs, yeah. and it's not always going to be up. Some of us have really, really, really deep downs. And when we get that far down, it, it seems hopeless. Right. It does. So what do you do when, when you need help to come out of that? I commented you know? on that one, too. I think that question, at least on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, because I do feel like hopelessness is probably the, the kind of the root of it all. Right. The bottom line. Right. Uh, but again, kind of going back to a little bit of what my dad shared with me um, in his life and that he felt an um, immense amount of guilt for surviving Vietnam when others that he knew didn't. Oh. And I thought, wow, that's heavy. heavy. Yeah. Like to not even think about, I would, I don't know, you know, I would be so happy and excited that I was alive right. and I made it home to my family, but to be thinking, yeah, I don't deserve this because my buddy didn't. I guess you never know until you're in that, that situation, you know? Yeah. It's like, I can't remember which shooting it was, but there are students that have taken their lives after the mass shooting yeah. because they survived. Right. It's like guilt for surviving something someone else didn't. It is. Yeah. So that's, that was absolutely something that was talked about on that question. Um, and chronic pain, yeah. chronic, yeah, chronic pain will, it'll get you. I mean, I have chronic migraines and I can't imagine, I'm very lucky that I have medication that helps me, but if I didn't, I can't imagine living like that. I just, I, I can't. Well, and then some people that have chronic pain that are taking, which opiates is a huge, uh, huge problem for us. And I think some people 
get to a point where they feel hopelessness and stuck in the cycle of addiction because they can't live without these pills in order to not have pain. Right. But the pills are just bringing them down. Yeah. And they down really and are. down. And it's, it's a sick cycle. And so, again, you're down at the well, the bottom of the well of hopelessness. Absolutely. And that would, we talked about that on one of the other episodes, how those medications raise your serotonin level. Yep. So they're not being, they're not as easy to get nowadays. And I think that's one of the biggest, it's not a problem. It's great that they're not as easy to get a hold of. The problem is, is that people have to go look for it their drugs somewhere else and that's where we're getting into heroin and all of those yeah exactly but if you have the like if let's say you take an opiate that has serotonin in it and then you just abruptly stop all kinds of problems so that's what makes it so addicting as well and makes people need to keep on that right it's very sad it's a vicious cycle we need to um find alternative ways of of helping people than opiates there, there are more natural things that we can be doing for sure. Oh, yes. So uh, one of the things that I did find startling is that victims of, abu- of abuse are four times more likely to commit suicide. That is very sad. Yeah. That, and I don't know. That makes me sad. But also some other statistics yeah. that I really, these shocked me. To the point where we need to make some changes in the world, obviously, but just listen to this. 41% of transgender adults said that they have attempted suicide. 41%. That's like almost, that's crazy. That's almost almost half. half. (laughs) The same study found that 61% of transgender people who were victims of physical assault had attempted suicide. 61%. That's crazy. Lesbian. So it, seems, it, it sounds like a lot of it's PTSD related because I'm sure transgenders probably have dealt with a lot of identity type of issues right. and well, getting bullied or harassed sure. or feeling even by their own family alienated. Right. Well, that's listen to this. That's what this says, basically. <clears throat> Lesbian, gay, and bisexual young people who come from families that reject or do not accept them are over eight times more likely to attempt suicide than those whose families accept them. Each time an LGBTQ person is a victim of physical or verbal harassment or abuse, they become two and a half times more likely to hurt themselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it goes back to that golden rule, man. Peace, love, and understanding. and Just accept each other. That is really what it is. You know, stay out of each other's yards and just accept each other. You know, right. I mean, yeah, you don't be, have to be agree friends. with it. Like, just no. at least be respectful if yeah. you don't. Respectfully yeah. agree to disagree. Exactly. That's... If it doesn't affect you, keep your business. Yeah. You know? It sucks. It does. I feel bad for <clears throat> those type of, you know, situations for those kind of people. Yeah, absolutely. They're... I do, too. And there's, there's so many. I mean, the statistics kept going of, you know, that even with the, like, the Asian transgender LGBTQ their risk is even higher and African Americans are even higher. It's like, it just keeps going and it it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It really is. But when I looked up what is considered to be the number one reason of why people commit suicide, the clear first answer was depression. That is the biggest reason. And I thought that's very vague because it kind of, all this falls under that umbrella. Exactly. And but I understand because I have suffered from depression right. in my life that when you are in one of those moments, you do feel like this is never going to get better. Right. And that's where we have to find help for people, where, wherever it is, if it's medication, if it's mental health care, if it's whatever, yeah. that's where our problem is and where it needs to be fixed. You know, I would say probably I've been in some dark spots. I would say my divorce was probably the, one of the darkest and yeah. mainly because not being in the same house as my daughter seven days a week was like cutting off one of my arms yeah, and and lending it stayed somewhere else until I saw it, you know? Yeah. That was a dark spot. But again, I just never felt like I was that type of person. I was pretty fortunate in growing up that both my parents made me go to, you know, like counseling throughout my growing up to talk and and i 
I appreciate that now. Right. I hated it then, right. but I really do appreciate it now. And I feel like it has so much value because we carry so much inside of us privately that can eat us up. Oh, yes. And it can send us in these depressions and in these dark places. But if we felt like, you know what, kind of like the same concept of going to confessional, like, you know, a Catholic will go and sit in behind a screen and they don't see who they're talking to and the, the priest doesn't see who's making the confession. In essence, like that. Right. It's like you're getting it off your chest. I like the counseling aspect more because it feels like one-on-one -on -one, and there is something about looking at somebody in the eye and telling them your, your things, your issues. Right. It's hard, but once you do, it feels so relieving. Absolutely, it does. And yeah, I think the first step to, like, getting better is admitting it because yes. then you're allowing yourself to find help yeah. and, like, understanding that this is real. It's not, like, because if you don't admit it, then you're never going to get anywhere. Right. right. Especially to yourself. If you don't admit it to yourself, True. that's even worse. Absolutely. Yep. And it's like you said, it is half the battle, you know, then going in and kind of talking about it. And sometimes it's not even, I'm not listening for some magical response or something that's going to change my life right then and there. It's just getting it out of inside of, of me. Right. And being able to take like a deep breath. Yeah. It's like, I'm not carrying that around. Anymore. It it's does. A, it makes it's a not huge a secret. Difference. It's not a, yep. you know, I'm not ashamed. It's done. And it's done in a safe place, right? You know that you can do that. But um, that's the first thing I would re recommend in anybody that's facing this kind of thought yeah. or feeling or depression that want to lead to this. Right. I think is go talk to somebody first. Call those numbers that yeah. Samantha shared. Go talk to a therapist or a counselor. This does not mean we are crazy because we need to go. Talk. No, we're human. Not at all. We are Absolutely. human, and we have mouths and vocal cords and brains to express our inside, right? Our hearts for a reason, and it's not meant to be said to a wall, right? It's meant to connect to other humans because, in turn, you never know. You might actually be helping someone without even knowing it. Absolutely, it happens all the time by opening up yourself, right? Sure, I agree. One of the other poll questions that I asked was, how many people have ever attempted or contemplated suicide? And of the people that took this poll, 57% of them said that they had. And wow. I don't know, okay, I obviously can't get into everybody's head, but I wonder if some of the people that said no just didn't want to share that they have had those thoughts. Because I think that it is it's natural. I think it, it's when you get depressed, when life gets that down. Yeah. I think most people do have those kinds of thoughts. It's just yeah. whether or not you go through with it or exactly. you actually start to plan. That's when it starts to get dangerous. That's exactly yeah. right. I mean, I've had the thoughts. I'm not going to lie. After you wouldn't my be mom human died, if you yeah. haven't, you know, done the math and said, OK, I am actually able to do this with yeah. my own life. Right. I mean, we all know this. Right. But like Marina said. You get to a point you actually try to go through with it. Right. Or start making plans to even find a way to do it that you right. like. Right. Then it's. The other one was a lot of them aren't intended to actually be successful. That's very true. True. I, I can tell you that of the spirits that I have talked to, most of them have said that they didn't mean it to go as far as it did. Right. And then the ones that did mean it to, they usually regret it i don't think i've ever had one tell me they didn't regret it they do there yeah. was that story i love this the story about the guy that jumped off the golden gate bridge right. and survived yeah. and he said as he was leaving like his hands were leaving the railing he instantly regretted it yeah. but you can't take it back at that point you know what i mean so and and with and he was one of the lucky ones. he was very mm -hmm. lucky i can't remember what they said but something on that level that your mom when we've had sessions and you've channeled your mom or even channeled Rob, talk to Rob for me. Something that 
really helped me in my spiritual awakening process was a to realize that none of those people in my life that that I know that have done that are going anywhere but the same place everybody else is going because they're there. Right. Um, and I know because my wife can connect to them. <laughs> um, and I know. But the I'm other nice. thing they shared, <laughs> the other thing they shared was what you've kind of just said was they all regret it. Yeah. And that it's different than passing naturally or dying of some other. Yeah. You know, like if you were killed or oh, God forbid, um, that they shared that you have to sit and watch from there how this has affected yeah. everybody. And I think that that's why, like, a lot of, well, pretty much all of the suicide victims I've talked to, they are there helping their families mm-hmm. so much. Like, there's so many people that have lost, like, a son or a daughter or somebody close to them to suicide and are now motivational speakers and so I really feel like they work through us, too, to try and undo some of the damage that they did or to try and help other people, you know? Yeah, I kind of feel like that's why Rob is around so much right. for a couple different reasons, because music was his passion, you know, yeah. above and bo- anything else. Yes. So they want to be around here. They want to be around the things that they loved when they were mortal, and kind of live vicariously through us. They actually feel a lot of our our sensations, our feelings. Yeah. They get excited like we get excited. Yeah. They just can't physically do it, you know, but Yeah, so when I, I heard see that morning. song in like when the song was played. Yeah. Um in homeroom when I started crying, yeah. I was already going through some stuff. Yeah. And right. The fact that, like, that song came on, that's why. Yeah. It wasn't just because the song played. Because I've heard that song so many right. times right. since then. It's because I was, already go- yeah, I was yeah. already going through some right. stuff. And so the fact that it was played then right. at that exact moment was like, that must be a sign right. that somebody's oh, here. Yeah. Well, this might and- blow your mind is that she's connected to him before. She knows. No, yeah, oh, know. okay, that's right. Yeah. She yeah. has shared that. She knows, yeah. And um, he always said that. Or he said that he always loved you. He thought you were very sweet. He, he could see nice the things man. that were yeah. happening and you were struggling with. And, and he really appreciated your friendship. A lot of times we don't take those threats seriously because we believe that they are just reaching out for attention. And that's a bad thing. But here's the thing is that most of those people that are reaching out for that attention are not just doing it because they're missing something in their life, but they also have mental illness because most of the people that commit suicide, I can't remember exactly what the statistic was, but it is really high that most of the people have some kind of underlying mental illness there. Yeah. 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 They might not even recognize it either. And that's exactly right. And we we don't, I'll tell you that I grew up with a family member that used to threaten it all the time. And I just took it like, you know, whatever, she's just threatening and, and she's not going to do it. And you know what? She wouldn't, she didn't want to do it. She wanted the attention. Why did she want the attention? Because of an undiagnosed mental illness. She probably wanted somebody to say something that showed that they cared. Exactly. But it was still went all the way back to, you know, a right. bipolarism or whatever it is yeah. that's undiagnosed. So we still have to take those things seriously, even if we think that it's just, you know, it's not true. They're not really going to do it because you just never know. You never know what a mental illness can tell you to do. That's true. Yeah. And I think going back to like the age range of like 15 to 24, was it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that a big part of that is probably social media now. Yeah. Because there's a lot of negativity on there. But I think another thing to think about with that is that social media can do a lot of good too with those kinds of things because yeah. it can show a lot of positivity right. and encouragement in that type of situation right. yeah. as long as the people don't focus on the negative and comparing themselves to other people because that's never a good way to get through kinds like these kinds of things. Right. Yeah. yeah. And things on social media can spread so fast to True. rumors and, you know, oh, I, yeah. I wouldn't want to be that age nowadays where you have camera phones and, you know, who knows what's going to show up on the internet. <laughs> It's scary. Yeah, and, and we're that, lucky that was. <laughs> we are very lucky. Although we, we probably would have been different if it was, I, you know, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's a good point. I, I think social media is good and bad. It has, you know, obviously the bad, which we kind of cover. But the good is you can see 
and get a lot of um, positive affirmations from there. Encouragement. Right. Yeah, encouragements. I don't know if people want to discuss their innermost right. problems sure. on social media, but um, even if there was groups for that, I don't right. know if there is. I've I'm never... sure there is. Sure There's there groups is. for everything, yeah. yeah. Right. And seeing people that have gone through similar things like you, that also is yes. very helpful because then you can see they've made it through. That and... is a very good point, and that had been pointed out too on one of the questions I asked, that being able to talk with people that have gone through that whether it's, you know, peer counseling for, for your age range or for, for us, you know, for adults, it is, it helps. It really does to yeah. talk to somebody that's been through it. The biggest thing that we have to remember is that suicide is 100% preventable. Yep. It really is. It is. Most people that want to commit to, or that, that try to commit suicide, they don't really want to do it. They're just really looking for somebody to reach out to them. So, what are some of the warning signs that you need to look for and maybe somebody that you know that you're worried about? Some things are insomnia, panic attacks, social isolation, irritability, rage, and feeling of being a burden. These are all things that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of others, obviously, if you see somebody that's just doesn't seem themselves. It, why not just reach out and say, hey, how are you today? Yeah all it's going to take is two seconds of your time and it could possibly save a life because True. sometimes it is as easy as that. Just and letting them know that you're thinking about them. Yeah. Exactly. That guy, the guy in the video, I wish I could remember his name and the one, the one that attempted jumping off the bridge. He said that everybody he walked by on his way to do that ignored him. And he said that maybe if somebody would have shown him a little bit of like compassion or hello or right. something that there's something out there, yeah. somebody cares because People do care, yeah. they do, but you don't see that when you're in that deep of a depression. I love that that guy, however many years before this happened, was standing on a bridge feeling insignificant yep. and depressed and all this and decides to take a leap to end his life, which he's not successful. And let me tell you, that drop, yeah, he probably was in a lot of pain was, yeah. for Talks a long time. That. Yeah, But all of a sudden, he steps out of this what he thought this persona was. And now he's out there. He's, you know, you see him on Facebook. He's, he's a motivational speaker, you know, like giving, doesn't he do that? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Speaks to people yeah, about this stuff. Um, like I have a close friend that's I've known for years. Um, who's kind of recently come back in my life who has done that and lost his wife to this and went out and was speaking on surviving yes. something like this. And I couldn't commend my friend enough to Absolutely. have to swallow that pill of pain every time that you get up and share your story with a group of people is so selfless right? to have to feel that every time yep. because I'm sure you're kind of reliving it on some level, but you're helping people. Oh, yeah. You know, whether you know it or not, because I'm sure everybody in that room may not connect with him verbally or, you know, anyway, yeah. but he is helping. He's and amazing. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Well, this the guy that I was talking about, um, his name is Kevin Hines, and I shared this on our Facebook page. So if you go to um, our Facebook page, Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses, you, um, you will see this. Scroll down a little ways. I posted it um, on Monday. And he gets into all of it and talks about in detail things. And he's just such an amazing person. And, and his his story is very, on a lot of different levels, motivational, not just on that, but on how you can take your life from being where you didn't think it was going to be any worse right. to where maybe at this right. point you don't think it could even get any better. That's that is the biggest reason. Please don't do these things because right. life does turn around. It may seem hopeless, but it does. It turns around. It always does. And it's still a gift. Yep. It is still just a gift. Just talk to somebody. Yep. Just take five minutes before you do anything and just talk to somebody. Yes, please. Even like the low points in your life, they're just like, they're lessons. Yep. They're they nice. Are. They're, it helps later on in life, like the lessons that you learn from these low points. You so it's couldn't nice. be more correct. Absolutely. To yep. be grateful for even those. <laughs> I totally agree with that. That's yep. a lesson that we've kind of learned over the last year and a half or so is that How we those, learn. those tests, they're hard. They suck, but they help you. And they it actually helps 
the high times feel even higher. That's right. You know, I mean, not like in a manic sense, but you have to feel a little sadness and, and, and some tough time in life, like Marina said, in order to really appreciate when things are great. Yeah. And knowing that, like you said earlier, too, that nothing stays on an even keel. Like, no. this is life, so it is up and down. Yeah. But just know that everybody is going through it. Everybody feels and thinks very similar, whether we share it or not. Right. We're all human, so we're pretty close. I mean, some people have other things that others don't, and I understand that. Yeah. But really, just try. Reach out to somebody. Yep. I mean, and, you never know what, see. what kind of mental illness somebody could have, too, and that's another reason why, you know, yeah. reach out to them, help them, because they may not know how to get themselves help either. Yeah, and have a little compassion when you're going through your life. If this isn't something that you struggle with in your own personal life, yep. you don't know what's going on and what battle that person sitting next to you in the store is going through nope. or a friend that's maybe not calling you back, you know. I mean, look at some of these celebrities just never know. that we thought, you know, like Robin Williams, I never thought that he would do yeah. that, but he had issues that we nobody knew about. We're not in his personal life. So you never know what's going on with somebody. So I never had any idea Rob would do that. I didn't either. I had no idea. I, I didn't either. That was one of the shockers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could, we could probably talk about this for hours, but probably. yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> we're out of time. We are out of time. <laughs> but well... We did it. We did. And we, we want did. to say thank you, Marina May Jones. That was awesome. <laughs> thank you, Marina, yes, for being our so first course. guest. Thank and a great guest. Yes. Very informative. Yes. I got I got schooled. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, it was good. I it, a tough topic, but you guys made it, you know, good. Yeah. And I think it's important that people like us get out there and share. I think so too. But, it is. Yeah. Well, did you have anything that you want to plug before well, we say goodbye? Let's share our social media pages. We shall. Why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at, at Spiritual Joneses, or you can find us on Twitter at, at Spiritual Jones. You can also email us at spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. <laughs> and now you can listen to our shows on YouTube. They're wow. all there for you. So spiritual Joneses, spiritual philosophy chatter with the Joneses. Um, yeah, find us there. If you want a reading from me, you can go to my website, which is Samantha Jones, psychic medium.com or on Facebook. You can find me at beyond the bridge 11. And what do you have, sir? Well, you have a website. Now. I do. We have exciting news on that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, I do now have a website that you, if you like art, I do art. Um, so you can check it out at djonesartcollection.com. Yay. Ah, it sounds so official to say. I know. We'll get a store up there. The soon. store's not up yet, yeah. but I think you can see the, the pieces. I'm working on getting the pieces up. Right. Yeah. But so, we're slowly but surely coming along, but the website is up it's and up. running. So yeah. we're real excited. And you can also find me on Facebook at uh, at D Jones Art Collection and Instagram at D Jones Art Collection. Um, and if you're into music, uh, check us, uh, the band I play in Gypsy Brown. We are also on the web, gypsybrown.com, and you can find us on Facebook as well. And we have some really, really, really exciting news about that. But I'm going to wait maybe till next week or the following week to really fill the beans. But, uh, we had some great things happen this week, and again, uh, I feel like that was part of Rob, yeah, being around and and helping and guiding, you. guiding yeah, us. for sure. So, um, but we're we're get, we're heading in the right direction, I and so. I can't wait to share it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so and next week, do yes. you know what we're going to discuss next week? I I'm always the last to know. <laughs> so, well, let me give you a hint. What? Next week is episode lucky number thirteen. 13. Oh no. Yeah. So we're going to talk about all of the things that people don't like to talk about. Ouija boards and Ooh, tarot cards. That's a good idea. And hocus pocus galore, because okay. I think we need to. That ghosts? Some ghosts. <laughs> we can talk about ghosts. And a ghost will follow you home. <laughs> <laughs> that's my motto. Uh, it's not true, but it's my motto. Um, so, yes, we're going to talk about all of those things. The, you know, the dark side. 
Cool. I'm looking That'll forward be really to it cool. because I really think that this is an episode that will help people in a way that they didn't know they needed help. Right. Yeah. No, I look forward to that one. Yeah, for sure. That'll, That'll be, be a fun one. Yeah. A little lighter, too. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> need that after this week. I'm like all snotty, like always. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, we are going to share a song this week. Yes. Um, Adam Goodale, the writer and performer of our intro theme song, uh, Real God, it sent me a song this week. Um, that has a lot to do with what we talked about today. It's a wonderful song. Um, Adam is so good. I, I just love his, his music and his talent. Um, I love him as a person. He's a dear friend of mine. But this song is called I Got Sick, and it's by Adam Goodale. It's a great song. Uh, Listen to it. Wonderful song. Yeah. And um, we just want to say thanks to everybody for sitting in and listening to yes. us again this week. And thank you for everybody that contributed to this episode. I know it was a hard one. And, and all the people that messaged me, you you guys made this Absolutely. episode amazing. Thank thanks you. Thanks for all the input and your comments and reviews. Yep. As always, really appreciate it. Yep. Hope somebody gets something out of this somewhere around the world. Me too. Um, again, thanks to our lovely daughter, Marina. Yay. Thanks for thank doing you that. For you're, you're a sweetheart. Yes. I love you so much. Love you too. All right. Well, until next week, you guys, have a great week, and peace and love. sick you know I'm feeling better today if you still want to meet me I meet you halfway I've been trying to live with this pain One can see it on my face. All oh, the things you gotta do. Seem like they make everything worse. I'm so happy to be here. Glad I had my turn to ride this ride. It's such a beautiful life. I got sick, you know. I'm feeling better today. If you still want me. Meet you halfway. All the things you gotta do if you get sucked into that tar pit trap. Seem like everybody wanna see you fail And get so angry, wanna curse and yell Tell them all to go to well I'm so happy to be here I'm glad I had my turn to ride this ride is such a beautiful life I got sick you know I'm 
feeling better today If you still want to meet me I meet you halfway Oh, I feel so lonesome sometimes If you get sucked into that top hit trap 